12 obvious signs that there is a bad person next to you. Get ready because in this special video, we are going to uncover the 12 obvious signs that you may be living with a bad person. You know that feeling that someone around you is not exactly what they seem. As the philosopher Seneca once said, evil often hides under the appearance of good. And he was absolutely right. But don't worry, because today you will learn how to recognize these signs clearly and objectively. And most importantly, you will discover how to deal with every type of toxic behavior that may come your way. Stay tuned until the end, because I'm going to reveal the most surprising sign, the one that everyone tends to ignore. And I'll show you how it can be used to your advantage to strengthen your relationships and protect your emotional health. And before we get started, if you enjoy this kind of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications so you don't miss any new updates. Ready to begin? Then let's go to the first sign. Have you ever noticed that slight, poorly disguised smile when you trip up in a complicated situation? It seems strange, but this is what is called schadenfreude. It's an almost perverse pleasure that some people feel when they see others suffer. We're not talking about a little chuckle in a light-hearted situation, but real satisfaction in seeing someone else fail. Bad people take advantage of this, feeding on your sadness like emotional vampires who suck your joy to make themselves feel better. When you start to identify this behavior around you, pay attention. The first step to protecting yourself from these emotional vampires is to recognize that they are there, slowly draining your energy. Now, it's important to realize that this kind of person doesn't always act overtly. Sometimes, the pleasure they take in others' suffering comes disguised as false concern or comments masked as support. These are the people who say in a pitying tone, Wow, I knew that was going to happen, or I told you so, didn't I? This kind of emotional manipulation is insidious because it gradually undermines your confidence and you don't even realize you're being drained. When you notice these signs, the best thing to do is to distance yourself emotionally. You don't need to cut ties abruptly, but establishing personal boundaries is essential to preserving your mental health. Often these people are masters of manipulation, and before you know it, you'll be justifying their behavior to yourself. Oh, but that's just how she is, you might think, trying to ease the discomfort you feel from seeing someone enjoy your downfalls. This is the moment when you should trust your sixth sense and rely on that strange feeling this relationship gives you. Feeling drained or uncomfortable around someone is a clear red flag. If every interaction leaves you feeling like something is off, you are probably dealing with someone who takes pleasure in your suffering, and that should make you reflect. But how do you deal with these people in practical terms? A good strategy is to avoid sharing information that could be used against you. Don't go into detail about your vulnerabilities or difficulties, as this information can be fuel for the emotional vampire. If direct confrontation feels too hard, start with small actions like reducing the frequency of contact or limiting conversations to more superficial topics. The key is to protect yourself without creating more conflict than necessary. After all, in some situations, a strategic retreat is the wisest path. A classic example of this kind of behavior can be seen in work environments. Imagine that colleague who always seems to be lurking, waiting for you to make a mistake so they can point it out with a slight smile. This colleague isn't looking to help you grow, but to take advantage of your stumble to feel superior. It's at these moments that you should reinforce your boundaries and not allow this person's behavior to affect your performance or confidence. Knowing how to identify these people is crucial to avoid becoming easy prey. Speaking of boundaries, it is vital to establish yours early on in the relationship. People who feed on others' suffering often test others little by little, seeing how far they can go. The secret to avoiding being manipulated by them is to nip this in the bud. Don't be afraid to be firm, 
to say no when necessary, and especially to step away when you feel your energy is being drained. Life is too short to be controlled by those who only find pleasure in the pain of others. Has it ever happened that you're next to someone and for no apparent reason feel a strange discomfort, like the air around you has become heavier? This sensation is more common than you might think, and often it's your sixth sense trying to alert you to a negative presence. Our bodies pick up on signals that our conscious minds don't always immediately interpret. When a toxic person is nearby, they can emit vibrations that make you feel drained, irritable, or even confused. And the most interesting thing is that even without understanding why you feel this strange energy, the important thing here is to learn to listen to these signals and trust your intuition. This uncomfortable feeling reflects something that isn't right in the dynamic between you. Think of a typical example. You're in a group of friends, and whenever one person shows up, the atmosphere changes. Conversations get tense, smiles disappear, and suddenly everyone seems to be walking on eggshells. This person may not always be aggressive, but something about their behavior drains the energy of others. These are typical characteristics of emotional vampires. They may not reveal themselves clearly, but your body and mind recognize the negative impact they have on you, often before your consciousness catches on. When you feel this sense of strangeness, don't ignore it. The key here is to identify the pattern. Does this happen with everyone or only with certain people? If it's specific to certain people, your body is trying to send you a warning signal. The next step is to observe the behavior of these people and how you feel after interacting with them. If you feel drained, irritated or depressed after an encounter, that's a clear sign the relationship is toxic. And here's a practical tip. Start limiting the time you spend with that person. Little by little, you'll notice an improvement in your emotional state. Understanding and trusting your sixth sense can be compared to training a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. This means paying attention to the subtle signals your body and mind are giving you and learning to react appropriately. It doesn't mean you need to distance yourself from everyone who causes immediate discomfort, but you should be selective about who you spend your energy with. Not all relationships need to be cut off right away, but setting clear boundaries can help protect your inner peace. An interesting example comes from psychology. Dr. Antonio Damasio, a renowned neuroscientist, talks about how our brain is capable of processing subconscious information all the time, especially in social interactions. It's as if your brain is always sniffing out the environment for potential threats. If you start paying more attention to these internal reactions, you can avoid many situations of emotional drain. And once again, the secret lies in trusting your instincts. You have the power to identify who makes you feel good and who gives you that strange feeling. Now that you've learned to pay attention to your body's signals, it's time to take the next step and protect yourself from these negative influences. After all, life is already full of challenges and there's no need to carry someone else's emotional weight. But what happens when, in addition to that strange feeling, the person also refuses to take any kind of responsibility. This is another important sign, and that's what we're going to talk about next. We all make mistakes, but some people, instead of owning up to their actions, always find someone or something to blame. This lack of responsibility is a classic sign of toxic behavior. Imagine this, you're in a group project and something goes wrong. A person who never takes the blame, even when it's clearly their responsibility, quickly points the finger at others. They have an almost enviable ability to dodge any guilt, like Olympic athletes of evasion. These people dodge not because they're innocent, but because they believe they are never wrong, or at least want you to think so. The most frustrating part is that besides never acknowledging their mistakes, these people often play the victim. They turn any situation into a drama where they are the wronged party. If you've ever lived with someone like this, you know how exhausting it can be. In an argument, they always have a ready excuse. 
and if necessary, they distort reality to make it seem like the problem is yours, not theirs. And this creates a dangerous dynamic where you start doubting yourself. Emotional manipulation can be so subtle that over time you take on a burden that isn't yours, feeling guilty for something you didn't do. To avoid falling into this trap, it's crucial to stay calm and not get caught up in their game. When confronted, these people can become even more dramatic and try to turn the situation against you. Instead of losing your patience or getting involved in a never-ending argument, set clear boundaries. If the person refuses to take responsibility for their actions, don't waste your energy trying to convince them otherwise. Accept that this is a part of who they are, but that doesn't mean you have to carry the burden. Stay firm in your convictions, and if necessary, seek support from people who see the situation more objectively. Another important point is to avoid being the rescuer of these people. They are masters at making others feel sorry for them, manipulating situations to make it seem like they always need help. This creates a vicious cycle of emotional dependency where you constantly feel obligated to solve problems they created themselves. The key here is to say no when necessary. It's not about being insensitive, but about protecting your mental sanity. You don't need to be the hero of someone who isn't even willing to recognize their own mistakes. This lack of responsibility isn't limited to small everyday situations. Often toxic people take this attitude to bigger issues involving work, friendships, and even romantic relationships. If they never take responsibility for their actions, how can you trust them in the long term? And more, how can they grow and evolve if they are always dodging any blame? The problem here is that if you don't put a stop to it, you end up stuck in a cycle of frustration and emotional drain. When it comes to dealing with people like this, the key word is boundaries. Defining how far you are willing to go is crucial. And if these people, in addition to never taking responsibility, also have the habit of lying, that's the next sign we need to watch for. And it can be even more dangerous than just avoiding responsibility. We've all told an innocent lie here or there, like when we say someone's new haircut looks great, even if we don't think so. However, there's a stark difference between these small social lies and the compulsive habit of lying that many bad people develop. For them, lying is a manipulation tool, something they use to gain an advantage over others or to distort reality in their favor. A person who lies constantly becomes difficult to trust because you never know if what they're saying is real or just another one of their creations. It's like living in a theater where, with every act, you wonder what the new plot will be. This behavior can be devastating, especially in trust-based relationships like friendships and romantic partnerships. Imagine living with someone who lies so frequently that you start to doubt even your own memories. The lies can range from something trivial, like where they were over the weekend, to more serious lies involving betrayals or disloyalty. What's most concerning is that these people become so skilled at lying that they can often convince even themselves that they're telling the truth. The emotional manipulation that arises from this kind of behavior is draining and can deeply affect your self-confidence. A good way to identify these people is to pay attention to inconsistencies. If the story always changes, or if there's never a clear version of the facts, that's a strong sign the truth is being distorted. Of course, no one is perfect, and we can all forget details from time to time, but a pattern of lying is something much deeper. When you notice these repeated contradictions, it's time to raise a red flag. A practical approach is not to confront the person directly with the accusation that they're lying, but to ask questions that make them get tangled up in their own web of lies. Over time, this can help them realize that you're paying attention. Dealing with habitual liars is challenging, especially when these people are part of your inner circle. If confronting them seems difficult, you can start by limiting the trust you place in them. 
It's not about cutting them out of your life right away, but about protecting yourself. Avoid sharing important personal information or depending on them for critical decisions. And remember, you're not obliged to accept the version of events they present. Staying firm and trusting your own perception of the events is essential to not fall into the emotional manipulation traps these people set. Compulsive liars tend to use lies as a form of control. They distort the truth to manipulate others and create a reality that suits them. This is the greatest danger of this type of behavior, the ability to trap you in a web of deceit where trust is eroded and you get stuck in a false narrative. When dealing with these people, it's important to keep your feet firmly on the ground. Question everything that seems out of place and above all, trust your judgment. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. The impact of this behavior goes beyond personal relationships. At work, for example, a colleague who lies can jeopardize entire projects by shifting blame to others or distorting the truth to cover up their own mistakes. When you notice this kind of behavior in a professional setting, it's crucial to document the situations to protect yourself from future manipulations. And remember, you are not responsible for changing these people. If they have a habit of lying, that's their issue, not yours. But what about when these people, in addition to compulsively lying, also resist any type of change? This is the next warning sign, and it's worth paying attention to. We all know someone who seems stuck at a specific point in time, unable to move forward or adapt to new circumstances. This resistance to change is yet another sign that we are dealing with a toxic person. These people see change as a threat to their control over the world around them. It's as if they are firmly planted in the past, refusing to evolve while the rest of the world moves forward. This resistance to change can show up in small details, like the habit of saying, I'm just like that and I'm not going to change. This inflexible attitude often hides a deep fear of failure or loss of control. People who resist change can create a suffocating environment for those around them. They want everything to stay the same because the unknown scares them. In relationships, this can be extremely draining because they expect you to adapt to their needs without making any effort to change or improve. Instead of embracing growth and evolution, these people remain stagnant, and this can end up affecting your own progress. If you feel like you're being held back while trying to move forward, you may be dealing with someone who resists change. A practical way to deal with this is to set clear expectations Make it clear that for any relationship to thrive, both sides need to evolve. Change is part of life, and those who refuse to accept it will eventually be left behind. If you feel suffocated by someone's resistance, try proposing small, gradual changes instead of large transformations all at once. This can help the person adapt better without feeling so threatened. However, be prepared. Some people simply won't accept change at all. This behavior of resistance is not limited to personal relationships. In the workplace, for example, people who refuse to evolve can hurt the entire team. Imagine working with someone who, every time a new policy or tool is implemented, vehemently opposes it without even trying to understand the benefits. This type of attitude creates a toxic environment where innovation is stifled. The problem is not just that they resist change, but the impact this has on those around them. In such situations, staying calm and firm is essential to avoid being sucked into this stagnant energy. Resisting change is like fighting the tide. The more the person tries to hold on, the harder the adaptation process becomes. The philosopher Heraclitus once said, the only constant is change. And that has never been truer than in today's world, where innovation and evolution are happening all the time. People who refuse to adapt not only limit their own growth, but also that of those around them. If you notice that you're surrounded by someone who always resists the new, it may be time to reevaluate the impact of this relationship on your life. 
In the end, resistance to change can be harmful, not only to the person practicing it, but also to you. Staying close to someone who refuses to evolve can hinder your own progress. And that's something you need to keep in mind when evaluating whether it's worth continuing to invest in this relationship. Now, what if, in addition to this resistance, the person also starts exploiting your kindness? This is a clear warning sign, and we're going to talk about it next. Generosity is one of the noblest virtues, but it can become a dangerous trap when it falls into the wrong hands. Some people see kindness as a weakness and take advantage of it to get what they want. This habit of exploiting kindness is one of the most obvious signs of emotional manipulation. They play on your empathy, often using phrases like, if you were really my friend, you would help me or I can't believe you're going to let me down now. They know exactly how to manipulate your emotions to make you feel guilty, turning your generosity into a tool for their own interests. When you realize that someone is exploiting your kindness, it's time to set clear boundaries. Being generous doesn't mean being naive. Help when you can, but don't let it become an obligation. Remember that helping is a choice, not coercion. If someone tries to use your kindness against you, Re-evaluate the situation. You are not responsible for solving everyone's problems and saying no is a way to preserve your sanity. Set a personal limit that is healthy for you and understand that not every cause is yours to embrace. Often these people make you feel like you owe them something, even though you've already done more than enough. This can happen in friendships, work or romantic relationships. For example, that friend who always needs a favor, and when you say you can't help, makes a scene saying that you don't care about them. This is emotional blackmail, and it's toxic behavior. People like this are not interested in your well-being. They just want what they can get from you. They exploit your kindness until you feel exhausted. How do you avoid falling into this cycle of exploitation? The answer is simple but powerful. Set your priorities. This means understanding that your energy, time and resources are limited. When you feel overwhelmed by always helping others, it's a sign that you may be giving too much of yourself. Practice self-care and remember that saying no is your right. If you don't set limits, other people will set them for you, and most of the time, it won't be in your favor. So respect your needs and don't feel guilty for taking care of yourself. A classic example of this exploitation is when someone uses the pretense of friendship to manipulate. A true friend would understand and respect your limitations, but a toxic person will use any argument to make you feel guilty for not accommodating them. And the most concerning part is that the more you give in, the more this person will take advantage. Emotional exploitation can be a difficult cycle to break, but it's necessary to preserve your mental health. And remember, your kindness should not be treated as a bargaining chip. Exploiting kindness is just one of many signs that something is wrong in a relationship. If you've noticed someone in your life exhibiting this behavior, it's time to reflect. And if, in addition to this, you still feel like there's something deeper and more unsettling, as if something simply isn't right, then that's another important sign to consider. Let's talk about that next. Have you ever been in a relationship or friendship, and despite everything seeming fine on the surface, something inside you just screams that something is wrong? This feeling that something isn't right can be one of the most important signs to pay attention to. We often ignore these feelings, especially when we're emotionally involved. The problem is that by doing so, we blind ourselves to the warning signs right in front of us. This feeling of discomfort may be your subconscious picking up on small details, behaviors, or attitudes that don't seem so obvious at first. A practical way to assess this feeling is to observe how you feel after spending time with this person. Do you leave feeling energized and inspired, or do you feel drained and heavy? When we're in healthy relationships, we come away from interactions with a sense of lightness and joy. However, when something is wrong, 
The feeling of emotional exhaustion is often an indication that the relationship is hurting you. Don't ignore that strange feeling. Trust it. It's your body and mind trying to protect you from something you haven't yet identified clearly. In addition, the opinions of those close to you can also be an excellent gauge. Often, friends and family see things that we, being too involved, cannot. If several people around you are warning you about someone's strange behavior or attitude, it may be time to stop and reflect. It's not about accepting every opinion without question, but about considering what these people are noticing. They may be seeing something you're refusing to see, and this is a way to avoid being manipulated or falling into a toxic relationship. This kind of emotional alert can also be useful in the workplace. Have you ever noticed when a partnership or collaboration looks good on paper, but for some reason you feel like something isn't right? This feeling can indicate that the person you're dealing with has hidden intentions or isn't entirely trustworthy. Ignoring these signs can lead to complicated situations in the future, so whenever this feeling arises, take a moment to pause and analyze the situation more deeply. Listening to your sixth sense is a valuable skill that can save you from many headaches. Now, what do you do when this feeling persists? The answer is simple. Have an honest conversation. Not with the person causing the discomfort right away, but with yourself. Ask internal questions. Why am I feeling this way? What has changed in the relationship? Does something seem to be being hidden? Often these reflections will help you see the points that were being ignored. And if it's still not clear, it may be time to directly question the person. But remember, do this with care and caution, without accusations, but seeking to understand what's behind this feeling. Feeling that something isn't right is a kind of natural defense that we should respect. The more we ignore it, the more we open ourselves up to being manipulated and mistreated. And if, in addition to this feeling that something is wrong, you start to notice contempt in the person's attitudes, that's an even more serious warning. We'll talk about that next. Nothing is more corrosive in a relationship than contempt. This feeling is more than just simple disdain or passing irritation. It's an emotion that undermines self-esteem and destroys trust. When someone shows contempt for you, whether through biting comments, disapproving looks or attitudes that belittle you, they are sending a clear message. You have no value in their eyes. Contempt manifests in many ways, such as cruel sarcasm, jokes at your expense, or even the infamous side-eye. These attitudes, even if subtle, gradually erode mutual trust and respect, which are essential pillars of any healthy relationship. The worst thing about contempt is that it often appears in sneaky ways. You may not immediately realize that you're the target of this deeply negative emotion, because the person who displays it is rarely direct. Instead, they use sarcasm or jokes to disguise their true intention. They might say something like, Oh, you really think that's going to work? Followed by an ironic smile. It's a form of emotional manipulation where the person uses contempt to make you doubt your abilities while maintaining control of the situation. Over time, you begin to question your own choices, dreams and even your dignity. When you notice signs of contempt, the first thing to do is not internalize this behavior. Contempt says more about the person displaying it than about the person receiving it. Those who use contempt as a tool are usually insecure and need to put others down to feel superior. This is not a reflection of your worth, but of the emotional fragility of the other person. Set clear boundaries and, if possible, call attention to the behavior. Asking directly something like, did you mean that in a negative way, can make the person realize that you're not willing to accept that kind of treatment. Contempt is harmful not only emotionally, but also physically. Studies from the University of Washington show that constant contempt in a relationship significantly increases stress levels and can even affect physical health leading to the development of heart disease, hypertension, and other stress-related conditions. In other words, this feeling not only destroys the relationship, 
but also compromises the health of the person experiencing it. That's why it's essential to recognize this behavior and above all, protect yourself from it. No one deserves to live under the weight of contempt. The most effective way to deal with contempt is not to let it take root. This means identifying the behavior early on and acting firmly. Whether it's a friendship, romantic relationship, or even a work partnership, you have every right to demand respect. If the person isn't willing to change, it may be time to reconsider the importance of this relationship in your life. Contempt is something that feeds off your passivity, so don't be afraid to stand your ground. Your worth is not determined by how others treat you, but by how you allow yourself to be treated. If contempt persists, the relationship may be beyond saving. After all, anyone who doesn't respect you doesn't deserve your time or energy. But what if this person, in addition to showing contempt, also mistreats the most vulnerable beings like animals? This is a clear sign of an even deeper problem, and that's what we'll talk about next. One of the most revealing ways to understand someone's character is by observing how they treat the most vulnerable beings, like animals. The philosopher Immanuel Kant said, We can judge the heart of a person by their treatment of animals, and this is an undeniable truth. When someone shows indifference or cruelty toward animals, they are showing an absence of empathy and compassion that can reflect in other areas of life. These people often have no problem mistreating a defenseless being, which indicates that they are also capable of harming others without remorse. This lack of respect for life says much more about someone's character than any words they might say. It's important to realize that the issue isn't just in extreme acts of cruelty, but also in small acts of neglect. Someone who ignores the basic needs of a pet, such as food, medical care and affection, shows a coldness that should not be underestimated. If a person is incapable of caring for a being that depends on them, how do you think they will treat others in vulnerable situations? This can be a clear warning sign about how this person handles power and responsibility. Furthermore, the way someone talks about animals is also revealing. If the person shows disdain or indifference when mentioning cases of mistreatment or makes jokes about animals suffering, this behavior should be seen as a sign that something is wrong. This kind of attitude shows a lack of remorse and a coldness that will inevitably be reflected in human relationships. Someone who disrespects animal life is unlikely to have genuine empathy for others. And this can be a clear indication that you're dealing with a toxic and manipulative person. If you notice someone close to you mistreating animals, it's time to reconsider the nature of this relationship. This may seem like a minor detail, but it reveals a pattern of behavior that, in the long run, can cause many problems. People who are incapable of showing affection and respect for the most vulnerable beings often display the same contempt in other areas of their lives. Maybe not immediately, but over time, this lack of empathy and responsibility can manifest in how this person treats you or others around you. Pay attention to the signs. Protecting animals and reporting mistreatment are actions that speak volumes about your character. If you value respect for life, this should be reflected in your actions. Surrounding yourself with people who share these values is essential to maintaining healthy and balanced relationships. Don't underestimate the small signs. They can be indicative of a problematic character. And remember, Respect for the most vulnerable beings is a direct reflection of a person's humanity. If you've already noticed this kind of behavior in someone close to you, it's time to question the impact of this relationship on your life. And if this person, in addition to mistreating animals, also never shows remorse for their negative actions, then we're dealing with an even more serious problem. This is the next point that deserves your attention. The absence of remorse is one of the most alarming signs that you're dealing with a bad person. We all make mistakes, but what sets emotionally healthy people apart from toxic people is the ability to feel empathy and regret for their actions. 
When someone behaves in a harmful way and never shows any regret or concern for the consequences of their actions, this reveals a deep trait of emotional manipulation. These people rarely apologize, and when they do, it's not sincere. For them, an apology is just another tool to manipulate or maintain control over the situation. You've probably met someone who, instead of apologizing, blames others for their own mistakes or tries to justify their behavior with empty excuses. This lack of remorse is not only frustrating but also deeply exhausting. Being around someone who never acknowledges their flaws makes you carry the weight of mistakes that aren't yours. They have an almost surreal ability to turn the situation around, making you feel like you're the one to blame. It's like being in an emotional game where the rules constantly change so that you always lose. What's most concerning is that these people often take pride in their harmful actions. They may even tell stories of how they hurt someone with a smile on their face, as if there's nothing wrong with that. This behavior is typical of individuals with psychopathic traits who simply lack empathy for others' suffering. Instead of reflecting on their actions, these people continue to behave destructively with no intention of changing. The problem is that the more you tolerate this behavior, the more you become a victim of their constant lies and manipulations. When dealing with this kind of person, the best strategy is to distance yourself emotionally. Don't try to fix them or make them see the error of their ways, because that rarely works. These people rarely change, and continuing to invest your energy in them will only exhaust you. Set firm boundaries and, if necessary, distance yourself entirely. Remember, you are not responsible for anyone's actions or lack of remorse. Protecting your emotional health should be your priority. After all, a person who never feels remorse will likely never be able to have a healthy relationship. The absence of remorse can also manifest in more subtle ways. People like this may seem unfazed after causing pain or suffering. They may go on with their lives as if nothing has happened, while you are left dealing with the consequences of their actions. This cold behavior is a clear sign that you are dealing with someone who lacks empathy. And this is extremely dangerous because the absence of remorse is what allows these people to continue hurting others without ever reflecting on their behavior. If you've ever lived with someone who never shows remorse, you know how harmful it can be. And if, in addition to not feeling remorse, this person also shows signs of envy, the situation becomes even more complicated. Let's talk about that in the next point. Envy is a powerful emotion, and in the hands of bad people, it can be devastating. Envious people are like real emotional vampires. They feed on the success, happiness, and achievements of others, but instead of feeling inspired, they desperately want everything to go wrong. Envy can appear subtly through belittling comments or disguised criticism. You know when you share a victory, and instead of receiving support, you sense that something is off in the other person's look or words. That's envy working between the lines, undermining your confidence and draining your energy. When envy is uncontrolled, it can lead to subtle manipulations or even direct sabotage. These people may discourage you from pursuing your dreams by saying things like, Are you sure that's for you? Or I don't think you're ready. Instead of sincere support, they plant doubts because someone else's success threatens their own insecurities. Rather than seeing your growth as an opportunity for inspiration, they'd rather hope for your failure. This toxic behavior can make you start doubting your own abilities, undermining your self-esteem. Identifying these people and protecting yourself from them is crucial. When you notice that someone always responds with destructive criticism or seems incapable of celebrating your victories, it's time to reflect on that relationship. It's not about cutting this person out of your life immediately, but about distancing yourself emotionally. Limit what you share with them, especially about your achievements and plans. Remember that envy can be extremely corrosive, and the more you expose yourself, the more you feed this negative feeling. 
Protect your energy and be selective about who you share your moments of joy with. Interestingly, envy can also be an indicator of how these people see themselves in relation to you. Often someone else's success serves as a mirror reflecting the envious person's own frustrations and insecurities, and that's why they react negatively. However, envy doesn't have to be a destructive emotion. When recognized, it can be transformed into a motivating force. Instead of feeling threatened by someone else's success, the person can learn to be inspired and use that energy for personal growth. But of course, not everyone is willing to make this transformation. You don't have to tolerate someone else's envy. If someone constantly puts you down or shows resentment for what you've achieved, set clear boundaries. When you recognize that someone has this behavior, do everything you can not to become emotionally involved. Be proud of what you've accomplished and don't let someone else's envy dim the brightness of your successes. Envy is a warning sign and the sooner you recognize it, the sooner you can protect your inner peace. With this, we conclude the cycle of signs of bad people. Envy, along with all the other signs, can be devastating if ignored. Now that you've learned to identify these behaviors, it's time to reflect on how to apply this knowledge. And now I ask you, have you recognized any of these signs in someone close to you? How do you plan to deal with it? Leave your answer in the comments. I would love to know what you think. And if you want to keep learning more about how to deal with toxic people and strengthen your relationships, Subscribe to the channel and activate notifications. That way, you'll stay on top of all our tips and never again be caught off guard by manipulative behaviors. Remember, change starts with small actions. Are you ready to take action?